So the first rule of using a door that's almost 20 years old is you don't talk about updates. And the second rule of using a door that's almost 20 years old is you don't talk about updates. So in 2011, I decided that this would be my final PC music computer build. It's a uh, Intel i7 uh, CPU with 16 gigs of RAM and a couple of SSD hard disks, a, a dual graphics card solution. And I see no reason why this shouldn't last me for the rest of my life, making music the way I want to do it. So inside this DAW system, I'm running Cubase version 5 or Nuendo version 4, which is basically the same thing. And I use this Steinberg CC121 hardware controller to have one moving fader and to do uh, easily fader adjustments in a track. And I don't use any of the other bells and whistles on this. I have my uh, custom key commands for that. I never update anything. I'm using version 1 on all of the plugins inside this system. I'm not using a subscription model. Whatever changes the companies might do today doesn't affect me at all. Back in the day when you bought a piece of software, you actually bought it. If the company went out of business, you always had the hardware solution so you could install it again from floppies or CDs. Unfortunately, this is not the case today where we have subscription models and online authorization and you have to be online at all times just in case. And this way of doing business, this way of thinking, well, this has really come from Satan himself. It's unethical, it's rude, and it's not the way you treat a customer and it should be stopped, it should be banned immediately. And this machine is of course not connected to the internet in any way. It doesn't even have a network adapter installed, it's never online. And since I never update anything on it, it will always boot up. I have a mirror of my hard drive, so if anything goes south uh, in terms of that, I'll just restore the mirror image and I'll be back up again within the hour. A lot of the plugins I use on this system are old free VSTs. This is the DX Reverb Lite from Anvidasoft, very nice reverb. I also use the Valhalla Vintage Verb. This is my favorite go-to reverb. Doesn't cost much. I do have the old Lexicon Reverb package inside here as well. I hardly ever use it as I find the Valhalla Vintage Verb much better and a lot cheaper as well. So no need to get this Lexicon plugin anymore as far as I'm concerned. I did buy some of the Waves plugins. I like the CLA drums very much. And I also like this channel strip, this SSL channel strip, which I use on many of my tracks and a lot actually. The Sony Q free plugin is very good. And I also like this one to saturate a track. Again, a free plugin. For delays, you can't really beat this Bionic delay. Again, free version. And this one, the Eventide H3000 factory is not free, but it's so good and well worth the money. This is also a 32-bit system, so I can't run any modern 64-bit plugins on here. So when I actually need to do that, either because it's a video review or demo, or I want to use some modern effects because I feel I need that effect in my own songs, I just render out uh, tracks from this system and I import it into the modern computer and run my tracks through there and just import the audio back into this system where I mix and produce and make everything ready. The track I'm working on here is using only free VST synths. As you can see from the track listing, I'm using Dexed for bass and I'm using the PG-8X for pads. And for almost all the other sounds, I'm using the free uh, Oberheim emulation OBXD. And I don't care at all if this is the least accurate or most accurate version of any Oberheim XA. I'm only concerned about do I like the sounds coming out of this? And I do, so I use it for free. So in 20 years from now, I'll probably be using the same machine as you saw in this video. And it's doing quite all right. I'm doing all right and everything is all right. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.